What is up everybody? My name is Hyken and today we are checking out the Aseni 1 60% Optical Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Before we get started, please remember to drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and please consider turning on that notification bell as well so you can know right when I upload. And if you want to see me unbox products like this one and play video games, feel free to check out my Twitch stream, link will be down in the description below. Alright, let's get into it. First off, let's start with the price of this thing because that is definitely a selling point here. For $58, you get the keyboard in either Gatoron Optical Blue Switches or Gatoron Optical Brown Switches. I went ahead and got the blue switches. We'll do a sound test on those and talk about them more later. In the box, you get the keyboard wrapped in plastic. You get an Aseni logo sticker, a manual, some extra colored keycaps, which is super awesome, a detachable USB-C to USB-A cable. You also get a keycap puller and a key switch puller. I actually really love these colored keycaps that they included. I swapped those out immediately. There isn't anything in the box itself that shows you which key they go to. It, it is kind of hard to tell except for like the shift keys. Those are pretty easy. But for the rest of them, I just went ahead and took a look on the product page. There's a picture of the keyboard with those new keycaps on there. Also, the detachable USB-C cable is pretty awesome. It adds a whole new layer of customizability to this keyboard. And it's USB-C, so that means that it's more future-proof and it's easier because you don't have to fiddle around with a micro USB cable. I also really do love the 60% layout and I think that Aseni does a really great job in implementing it. Build quality on this thing is super solid. There is zero bend because of this metal plate that's on the inside of the keyboard, but it also is still fairly lightweight and very easy to transport. On the back, there are also four rubber feet. However, there are no kickstand feet, which was kind of a bummer because I really do like the kickstand feet, but I found that because of the angle of this keyboard, I could still reach everything just fine, didn't have to strain my hand for any of that. So I got used to having no feet pretty quickly. Let's talk about these keycaps. They are double shot PBT with a matte finish on the top and a glossy finish on the side. This glossy side finish isn't something that I've ever seen before. Usually manufacturers just pick one. However, what this glossy side gives you is a nice reflective surface for the RGB. The back plate on the keyboard is already white, so it reflects very nicely, but the glossy, it just helps when you're looking at it from a certain angle and you see a little bit of RGB reflected off of it. It's pretty cool. The secondary function layer is also printed right onto the keycaps so that you can remember what all of, all of those do when you're pressing the function key. It's nice to have, I'm really glad that they did that, but I do have some concerns about the longevity of the printing. Some of it looks like it's already fading a little bit for me, so that does have me a little worried. The keyboard is also standard ANSI layout, so you can just swap the keycaps out if you like if you find a compatible set, which should be fairly simple. The font is classy, the lighting looks great shining through them, and they have the secondary function layer printed on them, so kind of checks all my boxes. Alright, let's talk about these switches. First off, let's do a sound test for these Gatoron Optical Blue switches. These sound great, absolutely fantastic. I think that these are the best blue switches that I have tried so far. I'm actually a pretty big fan of these stabilizers too. They're fairly quiet, they don't wobble a ton. They're both medium amounts of noise and medium amounts of wobble. So I can definitely live with that. Unfortunately though, every single key does wobble a little bit more than I would like. Not enough to mess me up when I'm gaming, but there's definitely some wobble there. Now, when I was talking about what comes in the box, I mentioned a key switch puller. Well, that's because this keyboard is hot swappable. Super awesome, however, there is a caveat. Normal mechanical switches usually have two pins on the bottom, at least most of the ones that I've seen, the Otemu ones, uh, the Kale Speed switches that are on my other keyboard, those both have two pins. 
plus the main middle pin, so I guess technically they're three pin, but two metal pins. These switches just have the middle pin. So that kind of means that your options are fairly limited to only the Gatoron optical mechanical switches. I would say that this is definitely better than not being hot swappable at all, but this does kind of limit your options. I found a couple different options, uh, the standard colors, there's black, red, brown, blue, yellow, and silver. Uh, I linked that down in the description below, so if you do want to pick up some more switches for this keyboard, you can just do that from that link down below, those switches should be good to go. That all being said, optical switches are supposedly faster than mechanical switches. Optical switches use a little laser to trigger, the beam gets interrupted by the switch when you press down on it, instead of the little metal leaf that's used on normal switches. These also last longer, supposedly up to 100 million keystrokes, which is absurd. I honestly can't really say that I noticed a huge difference going from these optical mechanical switches from my Kale Speed Bronze switches because I am using speed switches, so those are going to be the fastest mechanical switches that you can get. I think that they're, the two of them are pretty comparable though. I think if you're coming from a membrane keyboard or a cheap mechanical keyboard, you will definitely notice a difference with these switches though. Unfortunately though, the keyboard didn't come with any extra switches. Normally you'll see hot swappable keyboards come with an extra switch or two. Just in case one breaks, I guess that means that they're just placing a lot of confidence in all the switches that are in your keyboard currently. But uh, yeah, I would have loved to see an extra switch or two in the box. All in all though, these switches are the real deal. I love them. The cable that comes with this keyboard really isn't anything special, it's just a USB Type-C to a USB Type-A cable. It is braided, it has a little velcro thing that makes coiling it up and winding it a little bit easier, but uh, yeah, that's about it. It's braided, which is nice, but uh, yeah, it stays bent. It is nice, however, that you can just swap this out with another USB-C cable. So when I saw the box for the first time, I was a little bit confused, because this 6 Plus logo uh, was on another box from an entirely different brand. That Mage Gee keyboard that I took a look at a couple weeks ago, same logo was on that box. I did a little bit of digging and I stumbled across a review for the GK61 and that same logo showed up again, same type of box, just a plain looking brown box with that logo on it. So what I think is the, the whole situation is that Aseni is having this keyboard manufactured by this 6 Plus company over in China, and then kind of putting their own personal spin on it with uh, you know these special keycaps with their sticker, uh, the spacebar logo and stuff like that, and then they're shipping it out. That's totally fine. I don't have a problem with this. I just think that this is something that the consumer should be made aware of. It's definitely something that I would want to know about. Again, I don't have a problem with this. I know that a lot of PC power supply companies do this too. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just something that I want to make sure that people are aware of. This keyboard has software downloadable from Aseni's website. You can go on there, download it. There's also a 12 minute video showing you how to use the software. So I'm not gonna really take a ton of time to do that because you can just watch that video. And I, this video is already gonna be long, so I kinda gotta hurry it up. But it's definitely some decent functioning software. They do mention that there are still bugs that they're trying to work out and features that they're trying to add. It also booted up for the first time for me in Chinese, but you can change that by going to the little Chinese flag icon, clicking on that and selecting English. Honestly, for a keyboard that cost me as much as a AAA video game, I'm kind of fine with whatever software I can get. You can change lighting effects, do macros, add media functions, uh, volume control, play, pause, stuff like that. This keyboard also has onboard memory, so anything that you tweak in the settings in the software, you can save to the keyboard and it will be there when you fire it up even if you're on a different computer. Now, most 60% keyboards do have a way to access arrow keys, uh, the delete key, page up, page down, and stuff like that. You use the function key plus another set of keys. But I really like the way that this keyboard handled the arrow keys specifically. The function key is on the bottom right corner of the keyboard, so you can put your pinky on that and use the three keys plus the slash slash question mark key to use the arrow keys. I really like this. I think it feels super natural. It's very comfortable. It's much better than using IJKL, in my opinion, like the way that it is on my glorious GMMK 60% keyboard. 
It's things like this ease of use, plus the great RGB lighting, plus the hot swappable switches, uh, plus the detachable cable that makes it very clear that this keyboard was made by people who know what they're doing. Speaking of the lighting, I'm going to be taking you through all the lighting effects right now on the screen. It is going to be sped up a little bit so that this doesn't take forever. I will tell you by exactly how much should be on the screen somewhere. This has been a long review, so I'm gonna keep the wrap up kind of quick. This is the best budget keyboard that I have used, hands down. For the price of a AAA video game, you can get a keyboard with great lighting, a detachable cable, standard key layout so that you can replace the, the keycaps, hot swappable, I mean the list just goes on and on and on, folks. Uh, good software with reliable macros, I mean, this is an excellent keyboard and it's only $60. Man, you seriously can't, you, you can't beat this value. I'm thinking of swapping over to this keyboard. I don't know if I'll entirely swap over to it, but I'm definitely gonna keep it handy. I mean, th that that's how good this thing is. I I'm telling you right now, if you are searching for a 60% budget keyboard, your search is over. This is the one. That is gonna do it for me today, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please do remember to like and subscribe. Check out all my socials. They'll be linked down below. You know the drill. All right, I'm out of here. See you in the next one. Peace.